on today's churchtechcast.com Q&A show. ProPresenter with external drives, USB adapters, and Pro5 with multiple monitors. Hi, and welcome again to another episode of the churchtechcast.com Q&A show. This is the show where every week I help you with uh, answering some of your church tech questions. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. I'm your host, and I'd love for you to ask your question, so just do that below the video. Now, if you've subscribed to the audio or video podcast, which you can do for free by heading over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash subscribe, it's the audio or video is delivered automatically for free to your device or your computer, so there's probably not a good way to leave it under the video. Just head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash ctcqa, short for churchtechcast.com questions and answers, and leave your question there. That's a good way to do it as well. So the first question today comes from Matt Brock on trinitydigitalmedia.com and he says, is it a good idea to use to put ProPresenter information on an external hard drive? If so, what is the best way to do it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, first off, I would not settle for a cheapo drive. Uh, make sure that you get something that's at least 7200 RPMs. Um, probably USB 2 is a bare minimum. If you're doing a lot of HD video, you might want to look at something uh, USB 3 or SATA. Uh, an SSD would also be a good thing to consider. So those are things that I would uh, think about. And in the preferences for ProPresenter, you can set up your media to reside anywhere. I wouldn't do it on the network. I would do it on a directly connected drive at least USB 3, uh, USB 2 or better, uh, as I said. So that's what I would suggest to you as well. Now, Scott Wanzer via email, in reference to his USB adapter not working, we uninstalled and reinstalled, so the driver should be good. Our monitor is good. We tried different HDMI cables. We got a blue LED on the adapter, so I'm thinking the weak link is the adapter. Thoughts? Thanks. So, could be the adapter. All things being equal, though, th the thing that tends to break more often is a cable. You mentioned the HDMI. You did not, though, mention the USB cable. Now, while you're getting power from USB, there are four conductors on a USB cable. Uh, power, ground, data positive, and data negative. If one of the data cables is giving you an issue, that would explain this exactly. So I would first, before I gave up on the adapter, I would uh, switch out that USB cable and see if that fixes the problem. If it doesn't, then look at the adapter. And when you uh, send it back to the company or get uh, service, you have the assurance of knowing, well, I checked everything I could think of checking every single cable, it's got to be the adapter, as opposed to them telling you exactly what I told you, which was make sure you check the USB cable. Uh, Danny Thornton via email uh, on ProPresenter with multiple monitors. My question, I thought I could control what the projector screen shows without the audience seeing the ProPresenter 5 program visible. Meaning I thought that I could go from video to black screen to PowerPoint to black screen and on uh, without everyone seeing me manipulate the ProPresenter 5 program. I am supposed to have this running by Monday morning. He further clarifies, I'm on a PC. Are you saying to push the Windows logo button plus P and changing to which? PC only, duplicate, extend, or second only? If it's extend, do I move the screen to the second and then enlarge? 
So the answer is it is in fact extend. Duplicate is similar to mirroring in uh, OS X and second only is really a mostly useless feature unless you've got the laptop folded up on your desktop and uh, you're not actually looking at it, you're just using it as a glorified desktop computer. So extend is what you want to use and once you do that you'll go into the preferences for ProPresenter and drag over the output to the appropriate monitor which when you click on it I, it should put a, a a bar around it so that you know which one is which and then make sure you set that to the native resolution and that should work for you well I hope that was helpful I hope that those one of those questions was one of the ones that you've been asking and uh, therefore I hope that I've answered it but if I haven't, don't forget, I'm happy to answer your church tech questions. Just leave them below the video or over at trinitydigitalmedia.com slash ctcqa, either way. If you like this content, you'd probably like my email newsletter, so go get yourself on it. It's free, and in fact, I'm going to give you a gift for doing so. So just go to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts spelled G-I-F-T-S, and pick out your church tech gift, and you'll get a free subscription to my email newsletter. And don't forget, this content is provided to you free of charge, but if you need some church tech training resources, they're all located over at my store. I made them with you in mind to help either you or someone on your team get better at using tech in the church. Until next time, my name is Paul Allen Clifford, and I'm with Trinity Digital Media. Dot com. Go out and change eternity.